welcome today we are going to discuss about the anatomy of the skull right this is skull it's very interesting so guys let's start the session here we go skull rest on the upper end of the vertebral column and its bony structure is divided into two parts the cranium part and the face part right first we see about the cranium cranium is formed by the number of flat and irregular bones that provide a bony protection for the brain it has base upon which the brain rest and the wall that surrounds and covers it under this we can see the periosteum lining in the inner surface of the skull right next in the cranium bone one by one we will see the different bones the first bone we will see its frontal bone this is the bone of the forehead this forms the part of the orbital cavities which we say eye sockets and the prominent prominent ridges above the eyes is called supra orbital margin within the bone there are two air filled cavities which we can call sinuses and this sinuses opens into the nasal cavity where the frontal and parietal bones joints which each with each other we named as coronal suture and the frontal bone also articulate with the other bones like sphenoid bone sarcomatic bone lacrimal bone nasal bone and ethmoid bone these bones form the sides and roof of the skull they articulate with each other at the sagittal suture it articulates with the frontal bone with the coronal suture with the occipital bone it forms the lambdoidal suture and with the temporal bones it forms the squamous sutures in the inner surface it is concave and grooved to accommodate the brain and blood vessels the next bone is temporal bone so this bones we can see on each side of the head and forms the joints with the parietal bone occipital bone sphenoid bone and zygomatic bone each temporal bone has several important features so one by one we will see this features first feature is squamous part this is the squamous part of the temporal bone it is thin fan shaped area that articulates with the parietal bone the zygomatic process articulates with the zygomatic bone to form zygomatic arch this area we say cheek bones next feature is mastoid part here this is mastoid part which contains mastoid process a thicken region easily felt behind the ear and it contains very small air sinuses that communicate with the middle ear this part is external acoustic meatus which we can say auditory canal which passes inwards towards the petrous portion of the bone next here we see styloid process in the temporal bone it projects from the lower process of the temporal bone right this is styloid process the next bone we will see is occipital bone this bone forms the back of the head and part of the base of the skull this bone joins with parietal bone temporal bone and sphenoid bone its inner surface is deeply concave in occipital bone there are two articular condyles we can see which joins with the first bone of the vertebral column called at last this joint permits nodding movement of the head 
Between these condyles, here you can see foramen magnum, this large hole, right, through which the spinal cord passes into the cranial cavity. Next, sphenoid bone we will take. This is the area of the sphenoid bone. It occupies middle portion of the skull. On the superior surface, here in the middle of the bone, there we can see little shadow shaped depression. We name this region hypofacial fossa or cella tersica, in which the pituitary gland rests here. Okay. Next bone we will see ethmoid bone, right? This is the part of the ethmoid bone. It helps to form the orbital cavity, the nasal septum and the lateral walls of the nasal cavity. If we discuss about the parts of the ethmoid bone, here we see perpendicular plate. The superior and middle conchi also we can see inside the ethmoid bone. The horizontal flattened part, which is called cribriform plate, forms the roof of the nasal cavity, which has numerous small foramina through which nerve fibers of the olfactory nerves passes. Next is the facial bones, right? Now we will see the bones of the face. In that, first we see the nasal bone. These are two small flat bones that form the part of the nose. Next, lacrimal bones. These are two small lacrimal bones which we can see here. There is a foramen, right? It passes from the nasolacrimal duct and carries tears from the middle canthus of the eye to the nasal cavity. Next is, this is zygomatic bones. They form cheekbones here, right? These are zygomatic bones. Next bone is warmer bone, right? From the above, right? We cannot see this bone. It bone, this bone is inside the skull. The warmer bone is thin, flat bone. Superiorly, it joins with the perpendicular plate of the ethmoid bone. Next bone, we will see inferior conchi. Each inferior conchi is crawl shaped bone which forms part of the lateral wall of the nasal cavity. These are inferior conchi. Next bone is maxilla. We can say upper jaw bone. This originates as two bones but fusion takes place before birth. Right? Here we can see alveolar ridge in this part which projects downward and carries the upper teeth. On each side we can see large air sinuses inside this maxillary, maxillary sinuses we can see. Next in the diagram of mandible we can see body of the mandible, ramus, mental protuberance, mental foramen, alveolar process we can see sublingual fossa also we can see submandibular fossa we are seeing mandibular foramen we are seeing two processes we can see in this diagram coronoid process and condylar process in this we see temporal mandibular joint where mandible bone joins with temporal bone temporal mandibular joint here we finish anatomy of the skull thank you for watching this video if you like this video then subscribe my channel